YouTube. What's up? It's your boy Anthony Barber coming back at you with another haircut tutorial. Mm -hmm. Clearly, my boy right here is in need of a resurrection. We're about to get on that mid skin fade with a number four on top. Most of you already know, but for those of you that don't know, I like to begin by brushing or combing out my client's hair. Shout out to Still Too Comb for this dope comb you see me using. And I like to comb out my client's hair and get everything to lay in its natural direction. So once I get everything combed out, I'm gonna slap on my number four wall guard and I'm gonna use my magic clip with the lever closed and I'm gonna knock down bulk, but this is also gonna be the desired length for my client. So I'm just making sure that I give them an overall even cut. All right, so now that I got majority of the bulk knocked down, I'm gonna take my Andis T outliner, and this has the GTX blade, and I'm gonna go ahead and set my first guideline, which is gonna be my bald guideline. So right here, you're gonna see that I'm kinda retracing that initial guide that I set. And that's because I want everything to be very clean and consistent with this fade that I'm about to give them. And I just feel like when your work area is clean, then your work's clean. And that's kind of the only analogy that I got right now. I don't have anything really witty to say off the top of my head as far as that. And I know a lot of guys would argue like, oh, it don't matter, it don't matter. But the truth is, their work is sloppy. And I'm just being honest, the, the cleaner you are with your work area, the cleaner your fade or your haircut is going to be in general. So now that I set that initial bald guideline, I'm going to completely bald it out using my ball or excuse me, using my Babyliss Profoil FX02. And this is the gold version. You're going to notice that when I get towards the top of that guide, though, that I use that flick out motion. And that's because I'm trying to demonstrate a really clean, smooth transition from completely bald to stubble because later that's going to help my fade pop. So now that I got everything blended out as far as my bald guideline, I'm now gonna take my wall magic clip with the original fade blade and I'm gonna set my next guideline. And I'm not going very high because my client doesn't have a very large size head. His head's kind of narrow and, and it's smaller. You know, it, it fits him, but nevertheless it's smaller. So there's not a whole lot of work area there if you will. But once I set that initial guideline, I'm now going to close my lever and I'm going to begin to blend from the bottom of that guide right back up towards the top of it. And little by little, I'm going to open my lever as I go up. And every time I do that, you're going to notice that that guide's moving up with me. But that's okay because that's exactly what I'm looking for. By the time I make my way back up towards the top of that guide and my lever's fully extended, that guide will be completely blended out. And real quick, while I got everybody's ear for a second, I've been asked a couple of times if I could cut and do my fades in real time to demonstrate like the angle and, and all these other words as far as how I cut. All I wanna say is I say it all the time. Clearly you can see I'm using the whole blade right now flat on the head. The only time I use the corner of the blade is when I'm trying to do 
detail work in a little area. Other than that, my blade's consistently flat on the head. Whether there's a guard on it, whether there's no guard on it, that's exactly how I cut. And, and I would suggest that's how you cut too. It would only make sense. You know what I'm saying? So the only time again that I use the corner of my blade is when I'm trying to focus in a little area and I don't wanna be as committed as I would if I were to use a whole blade because then you run the risk of setting a new guideline when you don't want to. So if you use the corner of that blade to focus in that little area, you're less committed. So right here, you're gonna see that I'm gonna slap on my wall number one color guard and I'm gonna go ahead and set my next guideline, giving myself the same amount of space that I just gave myself with the previous guide. And again, once that, guideline's, um, once that guideline is set, you're gonna see that I close my lever and I begin to blend from the bottom of that guide back up towards the top of that guide. But this time I'm gonna keep my lever closed and I'm gonna go right up to where I just left off with the lever fully open. Typically, the one leaves some weight behind, but that's okay because I'm going to show you in the next step how to remove that. Alright, so anytime weight is left behind by the one close, you're going to want to come through with your wall half guard or half guard in whatever system you're using. So I like to come in with my lever fully open and I like to begin to attack that weight right above it. And the way I get rid of it is I use the fade down process. So I'm going to come in right where that weight is right above it and I'm going to begin to attack it and I'm going to close my lever as needed until it's completely blended out. And clearly you can see that it's erased and my, my blend starting to look blurry y'all. It's starting to look blurry. All right, so now I'm gonna come through with my wall one and a half guard with the lever open. And just like I showed you, I'm gonna use that flick out motion because I'm trying to blend that one and a half fully open into that top, which is a number four, the best that I can. I know it's not gonna do it perfectly, but like I said, I'm gonna try to do it the best that I can. So I'm not necessarily trying to set a guide. But once I clean up everything with the lever fully open, again, you're going to see that I close the lever and I begin to work my way from the bottom of that guide that I just set or the guide that I said I didn't just set. And I'm going to begin to blend right back up to where I just left off with the lever fully open. And you're going to see me go ahead and and do some detail work right here after I'm done with the wall one and a half guard and you're gonna see that I work my way through the one guard the half guard and then the no guard and what I'm doing is I'm just basically cross-checking my fade just making sure that everything's consistent so I'm gonna go ahead and do the fade down process right here and this is also a way you could do your blends instead of fading up you could fade down so you know it's just another something to add to your arsenal Alright, so right here you're going to see me use a little clipper over comb to go ahead and try to connect that fade into the top. My one and a half open left some slight weight trying to connect into that four close. So I'm just cleaning it up. In the video that I dropped previously right before this one, I explained the angles as far as when you're coming in with clipper over comb. And so right here, you're going to see that I'm coming in at a 90 degree angle. And that's because I'm trying to give him that rounded off look. Right here, I'm going to apply a hold spray on his front lineup because it's kind of here, there and everywhere. And I want to get everything to hold neatly in place. So when I do his lineup, it'll come out as crispy as possible. So if you saw the begin, well, clearly you saw the beginning. Uh, of this tutorial where I spun my man around, you could see that his eyebrows was connected, y'all. They was holding hands. 
so I had to disconnect those and now you're seeing me clean it up so when I clean up anybody's brows especially men I like to keep it very natural but clean just like a lineup I don't want to shape anything differently I, I don't want to thin them out clearly you can see he has a thicker brow and I left him with that all I did was cleaned it up because my man really really needed it so I'm just keeping the shape I'm keeping everything natural and right here you're gonna see that I clean up the bottom of it as well I also want to say this really quick you're gonna notice that in the front right behind his lineup on the left and the right side that there's a darker area right there in his blend and it's not darker because I didn't knock everything down evenly it's darker because I didn't go in and knock it down shorter his head divvies in on both sides right there and so I've cut him before and I know that if I go in and knock that down to try to give it that even look that it's gonna reveal that shape right there in his head and it doesn't complement him well so right here you see I'm going in and I'm working on his lineup and I like to begin by working on the weakest side his sides were kind of evenly so I just chose to go to the left and I'm just trying to keep everything natural and sharp and not push anything back farther than I've had to because clearly you can see on a side box area that I did have to to push it back some but a lot of that hair was overhang it doesn't look like it but it was and that hold spray it held it all together so I was able to to pretty much keep everything natural and sharp even though it looked like it was it was impossible so here is a look at the final cut y'all I don't know about you, but to me, it is looking kind of blurry. It's looking blurry. If you got anything useful out this, I ask that you smash that like button. If you're new to my channel, I suggest you stick around, subscribe. It's only going to get doper from here. I appreciate y'all. Be blessed and be a blessing. I'm out.